Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by Madisonville Marine. The boat show is coming to the Knoxville Convention Center in March, and Madisonville Marine already has boat show deals rolling, rebates and discounts on G3, Aqua Patio, Hurricane, Stingray, Sweetwater, whatever kind of boat you're looking for. Bass boat, ski boat, pontoon boat for the family. Madisonville Marine is the best place to turn, and that's where we recommend you go to look for boats. All right, we recommend you listen to the next guy that's on our panel. Bob Hodge came in, he waved his hand, and then we <laughs> threw him off. Uh, Mark Pankratz joins us, and uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, quickly, in this segment, I want to talk about the Dre Bowles and Butch Jones stuff uh, that came out this week. Bowles actually said no when asked by the new Sentinel if he'd been assaulted by his teammates, but must be pointed out, he was not under oath when he was asked. ESPN's Chris Lowe said that his sources have told him that Bowles told an independent investigator that Jones had acted properly. That was a tweet from Chris Lowe anyway. I've been told that there was no independent investigation, but because I trust Chris Lowe, I'm thinking maybe Bowles spoke to UT's counsel and that's how they got pushed to him as an independent investigation. But anyway, uh, this week in a new sworn affidavit added to the lawsuit against UT, Bowles said that he was punched by Kurt Majit. He said that Butch Jones said to him that he had betrayed the team. And then Bowles claimed he was threatened by Geraldo Orta. Another, another confirmation, uh, confrontation, I can't talk, was broken up. And Bowles said Jones instructed the team to stay away from him. The, uh, and according to the lawsuit, Majit told police, according to the, another lawsuit that's being quoted for this one, uh, Majit told police that he did assault Bowles. His attorney told the New Sentinel yesterday, however, he never struck Bowles. So if that's the case, Bowles is lying, which means he lied in a sworn statement. As for Jones, he vehemently denied those accusations. You can see it there. Uh, several current and former Vols have said to me the story doesn't hold uh, water. Uh, they said that uh, the incident would be way out of character for Butch Jones. They don't believe it. Sources in the UT administration don't believe it. And UT Athletic Director Dave Hart said Thursday that he trusted Jones. All right, guys, uh, let's get to the questions here for you. And I'm going to give each of you one. You're each going to have a minute or two, all right? Uh, Chuck Cavaliers, if this is somehow proven to be true, if it's proven to be true, and I don't, you have to have a recording. I don't know how you prove it to be true. If it is, though, is that the end of Butch Jones' career at Tennessee? Well, you would certainly think that could set in motion the steps to where that could happen because of such how strongly the denial was worded by Butch Jones and how he looked at this as an attack on his character mm -hmm. and nowhere near the truth of what happened. But if it could be proved or disproven, then yes, I think it has a huge impact either way. Not, not only on the case, but on his career. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. The thing. If that is proved true, and I don't think it will be, but if it is, that would be hard to continue your career anywhere because you're going to have all kinds of protests if somebody tries to hire you. Josh Ward, next question. Uh, I, I can understand why Bowles might lie to the press. If you've been assaulted or threatened because you're snitching, the last thing you're going to do is go to the press and say, yeah, I snitched. However, this would mean that he lied in a sworn affidavit. Why would he lie in a sworn affidavit? I've struggled to come up with a good reason why. Uh, the, the reasons that I've heard the most, uh, one, he wasn't playing a lot at Tennessee. So uh, the fact that he wasn't getting playing time and decided he needed to transfer to play somewhere else, uh, he's a scorned former football player that wants to get back at UT. Uh, you could also have lawyers that are pushing him perhaps in a direction, but there's a lot to lose legally if you lie in this sworn affidavit. There's nothing to lose lying to the new sin. I, I struggle to to come up with a lot of reasons to lie in a, in a sworn affidavit as he is accused of. Yeah, even if you're scorned, you're taking an awfully big risk by lying in a sworn affidavit. And it's Not also, that it doesn't happen. Yeah, but. he would be going after UT 15 months after the fact. What, emotionally, you'd be more likely to go after them three months after the fact, mm -hmm. I would think, as opposed to 15 months later. You would think, all right, let's continue thinking about this. Mike Strange, do you believe the context, which we don't get a good feel for that, do you believe the context of the Bowles-Jones conversation, the alleged conversation, might change how we view that statement if the alleged statement was made. Oh, absolutely. I believe context is very important to anything. Uh, and, and I'm, if he said that, I'm, I'm not trying to excuse Bush Jones here, but, but in context, if he just cold-blooded knew exactly what was going on and said it, that's one thing. But if in the heat of the moment, not, maybe not having all the information, if he said it. I've, I've said some things in anger, say in an argument with my son, that I later realized, boy, that, I didn't handle that well and went back and 
try to rectify the situation. So, yeah, I, I think context is very important. Yeah, and again, you're seeing what's you know thrown out there. You also wonder if perhaps he said something to the effect of, um, you know, your teammates will feel that you betrayed the team, and we're just getting the betrayed. The team. I just wonder about the, the. I agree with you. I think the context may shift this thing because from day one, the story that I've heard is. Butch Jones handled this properly. And it seems that everyone says that, and everyone says that's certainly in character for him. So, All right, last one. Uh, I spoke to some VFLs this week, a number of them, and uh, was a little disappointed, not shocked at all, because I knew this goes on. But uh, I asked them about the Dre Bowles situation, and they said that he didn't witness the rape firsthand. So he should have gone to Williams and Johnson before calling the cops and believing the girl. Basically, you don't go against the family. Um, Mark, uh, these guys compare it to life and death with the military. I don't think it is life and death with the military, but I mean, I don't think it's like that. I think, yes, it's life and death with the military, not for a football team. Uh, as a former player, as a former coach, your thoughts on keeping all dirt inside the house, even potential crimes? Well, I, I think it is a, a reality of that culture, and a lot of it has to do with the upbringing. You know, a lot of these guys come here, the, the background they come from is snitching is the worst thing you can do. It's yep. worse than breaking a law. If you go against your family or, or a, uh, a member down, uh, of the neighborhood down, it's wrong, and someone's going to get hurt for it. Um, but that's where coaching and that's where administration, that's where leadership comes in, and you talk to guys, right is right, wrong is wrong. Because eventually, especially in this world, that's the scary stuff about all this stuff we don't know. Mm -hmm. The reality is with Twitter and everything else, the, the truth is eventually going to come out. And so you got to be up front and be, even if it goes against the family, so to speak, initially, you got to be honest and upfront about it because eventually it's going to come. And that's what's hard for coaches. They're worried about that, that paycheck. They're worried about having to deal with the media. Um, but you got to be up front and be honest about it regardless. I asked, well, and these are good guys. I mean, I was, it's not like I was talking to hardcore guys out there. These good football players, good guys. Um, talked to, I asked one after, after we were talking about this. I said, okay, let me take this further. Let's say you're a New England Patriot and you know Aaron Hernandez has killed someone. The response was, did I see him kill someone? Which, <laughs> <laughs> to me, that, that really shows the depth of the no-snitch culture and then also – uh, the band of brothers mentality that's created, I think, more so in football than probably other sports. Uh, when we come back, Mark and I are going to talk a little bit about Tennessee basketball, a little bit of Holly Warlick. Then we're going to get into specific allegations made in this case. Which ones are frivolous? Which one appears to have at least enough merit to cause Tennessee some worry? We'll discuss. Coming back on the Sports Source.